Hey guys, Mr. Post here, and we're going to look at horizontally launched projectile problems. And this is a problem right from our quiz, and it reads, Steve is running off of a 15 meter high cliff at 25 meters per second. And by saying complete the whole table below, what I'm really saying is, tell me all about the motion of this problem. I want to know about its initial velocity, its final velocity, the acceleration, the time, the total displacement, both vertically and horizontally, and also what is the impact velocity. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's get moving here. The first thing I want to look at is labeling my givens. I have a few givens I want to label, and we're also going to draw a picture. All right, so I am talking about here a 15-meter tall cliff. I got a 15-meter tall cliff here, so let's write that down. This is going to be 15 meters. Now, I know I am moving, in this case, at 25 meters per second. That's going to be uh, useful if we actually draw a picture. Let's draw a picture here. All right, so here is uh, my cliff. It's supposed to be horizontal, and here is the ground down below. So I know this is 15 meters high. Now, my projectile, or in this case, is Steve. Steve is my projectile. He is leaving here at 25 meters per second. And I want you to see he is leaving with a 100% pure horizontal velocity. All right? So his horizontal velocity is going to be 25 meters per second. And I say that because right now on the cliff, he's running. He is not going downward at all. So there's no downward component. The second his downward component begins is the point at which he leaves the ground. All right, so once he leaves that spot right there, that is when his downward velocity begins. So his initial velocity downward is going to be zero meters per second. The acceleration downward is the acceleration we've always used, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, courtesy of Earth's gravitation. Horizontally, though, in this case, my projectile is traveling, and it is moving horizontally, too. All right. If I'm looking at a free body diagram of Steve as he's running, let's make him a, a circle. The only force that is acting on him is gravity. And you'll notice I have an unbalanced force here. There is not a normal force to balance it out. There is not tension. I strictly have the force of gravity acting on him. So therefore, I have unbalanced forces. They're unbalanced going up and down. Therefore, I'm going to see acceleration. And I will see acceleration, in this case, going downward in the same direction as my unbalanced force. I also want you to notice there are no left or right forces acting on Steve. Steve is going to have his forces balanced left and right. So therefore, that tells us that Steve will have zero acceleration. Okay, the amount of time that it takes for him to fall down the cliff will be the same on both of these sides, and I still don't know how far he's traveled going outwards. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is use a kinematic equation to try to find out how long he's been in the air for. Before I do that, I just want to fill this in here. I realized I didn't fill in my final velocity horizontally. is 25 meters per second, and once again, when you have a zero acceleration, velocity stays the same. In order to grab the time, I'm going to use something that's given to me. That's gravity. Gravity tells me that everything is going to fall at the same rate. So as long as I know that I'm falling for a distance of 15 meters, I can actually use one of my two formulas, in this case, that have distance. All right, so this formula right here, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. I can actually use this. I can use this, but I can't use it yet. All right? I can't use it yet, because if I want to look for time, I want to grab this one right here. This one's going to allow me to grab time. In this case, I see that time is right over here. And I do know that in the y direction, in my y direction, my initial velocity is 0. So 0 times my time is going to cancel it out. So I'm going to use this equation to find out how long I've been traveling in the air for. What's my hang time? And that's going to be d equals 1 half a t squared. And if I plug this in right now, let's plug it in. 
I'll just keep working it over sideways here. My displacement is 15 meters. I have one half. A is going to be negative 9.8. And my time is going to be t squared. And that is what I'm solving for. I'm going to rearrange this algebraically. Now I could also add here, this is a negative displacement, so I should also add that. But in this case, when I rearrange this algebraically, I find out that t squared equals 3.06. Now I'm going to need to take the square root of 3.06 to find out what my time is. And the time ends up being equal to 1.74 seconds. Now I'm going to plug that in here. The amount of time that it takes to fall is 1.74 seconds seconds. Now that's going to be the same time that it takes to travel horizontally as well. Excellent. Now we can solve for my VF. All right. I can use either one of these to solve for my VF. I can use this now because I have time and I could also use this because I do have displacement. I'm going to say we're going to use this one right here in order to solve for time simply because that avoids us using the square and I know a lot of students are fond of using formulas that don't equal squares. So let's use this now. My final velocity is going to be equal to my variable VF. VI is equal to zero meters per second. Now I have acceleration times time. My acceleration is going to be equal to negative 9.8 times, in this case, my time is 1.74 seconds. Let's multiply that together and add it to zero to find out what my final velocity equals. VFY is going to be equal to 17.05, and I'm just going to make that 17.1 meters per second. Now, because I had a negative in my gravity, I'm going to use my negative sign right here. So that's negative 17.1 meters per second. Okay, the last thing I need to find out now is how far horizontally my projectile Steve traveled. Now, I know Steve was in the air for 1.74 seconds. I am also aware that he's traveling horizontally at 25 meters per second. Now, my initial velocity and my final velocity are the same, so I'm going to choose a formula that allows me to determine how far he's traveled horizontally. And the best equation that I'm going to find, and I'm going to use in, that, in this case, is going to be d equals vit plus one-half at squared. And I'm going to use this mainly because my one-half at squared will end up being zero. That part of the equation will be zero because, if you recall, horizontally we have no acceleration. So let's plug this in here. I'm going to work this problem out right here in this small space. D equals VI times T. And I'll put that down here, 1 half A T squared. Now I do want you to recall that my acceleration right here is going to be equal to 0. So I am just going to erase this part of the problem. Now my displacement horizontally is going to be equal to my initial velocity which is 25, multiplied by the amount of time I am in the air for. I have a hang time of 1.74 seconds. When I multiply them together, I find out that I traveled horizontally. I find that I traveled horizontally 43.5 meters. And I'm going to plug that in right here, 43.5 meters. Okay, the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to find the impact velocity right here. And my impact velocity is going to be a triangle. I am traveling downward in this case with a velocity, and I am traveling horizontally with a velocity. And the one thing you have to understand is that when I'm solving for a resultant, okay, the components have to be the same thing I am looking for. Meaning, if the resultant is going to be my 
v impact, then the components need to be velocities as well, and not displacements. Okay, so it's 15 meters over here. Let's erase that. Let's erase that 15 meters. So what I'm looking for here is my result in velocity. The components need to be velocities as well. Now my final velocity over here, I have is 17.1 meters per second. That is my y velocity. My x velocity was 25 meters per second. Now my result in velocity is simply going to be used, uh, I'm going to solve using the Pythagorean theorem, and that's going to be 17.1 squared plus 25 squared, and that's going to give me my resultant squared. Okay, I'm going to work the math out and find out what the resultant velocity is. And it ends up coming out to be 30.3 meters per second. I'll put a little negative in front of that too, guys, just because we are going downwards. Negative 30.3. Does that make sense? Well, it is definitely greater than both of my. It's definitely greater than both of my uh, component vectors as well. In this case, if we wanted to, we could also find the angle, but we're not going to in this case. We just wanted to find what was the impact value. All right, guys, that sums up this question. It starts with labeling the givens and drawing a picture. Hope it was helpful. Have a good night.